Maximum Throwdown by AEG. This is a small game, very small box as you can see. It is pretty much a filler game with art that you certainly recognize from other games by AEG. I guess that they decided to go green and to recycle stuff. Um, that probably has helped keeping the cost of the game low. Small box, as I said, and this is a dexterity game. Now, usually I shy away from dexterity games just because I am so terrible at them. I am so clumsy, I, I'm just horrendous. Um, I do so poorly that I usually do not enjoy the game. However, even though I don't do much better than in the average dexterity game, I still enjoy this game. This game here, I still find it not unpleasant, no, not unpleasant at all. Maximum Throwdown. Uh, it comes with three sets of cards. One is a set of six location cards that you place on the board, well, in the middle of the table. Here, I've set up the game on the, on the floor, but you should do it on the table. Uh, that also de 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 delimitates the boundaries of the game. You place those six location cards on the table in any configuration you want. Actually, you do not even have to use all of the six cards. You can follow some of the recommended templates or just create your own. Then you have a set of reference cards that also work as randomizers. Each card has a different illustration on the back. You shuffle the, um, the player aids at the beginning of the game, you deal one to each player and that indicates the deck of cards that the players, that player that receives that, uh, that card will use. And here you have decks of cards, suppose that we are going to have here aliens versus samurais. And we have pirates, here are the samurais, dragons, werewolves from nightfall, demons, etc. So each player grabs a deck of cards and that's going to be their their own deck the players shuffle their deck to form a drop pile and well then the game starts when it is your turn uh, the idea is that well at the end of your turn you will throw at least a card on the table and it has to touch at least a card that is already in play. That is, it has to touch one of the location cards or a card that somebody, and maybe you or yourself in a previous turn, has thrown on the table already. At the end of your turn, you um, throw the card there. Why this? Well, then the game goes around, the players go through their turns. When it is your turn, you will use the abilities um, indicated by your cards, by the icons on your cards that are still visible. So you throw the card at the end of a turn, of your turn, then the players go... No, we also have the dragons that are joining the fight. That the players go and throw their cards. So by the time the game goes back to you, not all of your icons may be visible. When you get to play, you pretty much then get to use the icons that uh, you still have available. Um, create a little bit of a metal. Oh, this is like the werewolves that had nothing to do with this game. I'm just showing you how the game may look after a couple of turns. Here we go. Now, to give you a better sense of what the turn sequence is and how it works, since it starts with you using the icons that you placed there in previous turns and that are still visible. First you evaluate your active icons, and those are the icons that are entirely visible. Suppose that we are playing the turn of the aliens so with these purple cards. Then the alien has one, two, three, four icons available. You evaluate the icons that are active. You score points for each six pips that are entirely visible, that are invisible icons, you score a point. In this turn, the aliens have scored one point. Then you activate the attack and steal icons. The steal icons are these, and the aliens can use such icon, they have such icon. 
For each such icon, you draw a card from an opponent's deck and you throw it. Now, why would you want to throw a card of an opponent and that would give them an advantage? Well, because you can throw cards face down and a card that is thrown face down is completely useless. It doesn't score any actions. On top of that, you can still use it to cover icons belonging to your opponents. That's for the steal action. If you have attack icons, then you discard a, a card from an opponent's deck. So if you have attack and steal, you resolve them at that point. Then you draw at least a card, and you draw an extra card for each draw icon that you have, and then you get to, draw, to throw a card, and you can throw an extra card for each throw icon that you have, or you may re-throw a card that missed. A card that missed is a card that doesn't touch any other card in play and therefore should be discarded unless you have the, um, the throw icon and that allows you to get it back and, th and try again, throw it again. There's also another icon which is the break icon which allows you to keep in play a card that missed, a card that is not attached to anything. So after you have thrown your card or your cards, in case you have thrown icons that you can use, your turn is over, the turn goes to the next player who goes to the same sequence. First evaluating active icons, scoring points, uh, attacking and stealing if those options are available, drawing at least a card and throwing at least a card. The game continues until all players have run out of cards. If you run out early, well, then you just sit there and wait for the other people to be done, but that usually won't take too long. And at the end of the game, when all players have used all their cards, the player with the highest score is the winner. So what do I think about Maximum Throwdown? Well, it does what it is supposed to do, at least what I think it is supposed to do, which is to be a simple, light, fun filler with surprises, with reversals of fortune, even with some strategy, yes, believe it or not, there is a little bit of strategy. Of course, it completely goes out of the window if you are like me, that, meaning that you come up with a strategy and then you cannot implement it because you're so bad at throwing stuff and you're so ineffective in anything manual that you try to do, but that's a different story. If you have some sort of uh, hand-eye-mind coordination, which I clearly lack entirely, you probably will be able to translate your strategy into action. Other than that, uh, the game is still fun. Even for me, and I do crazy stuff, uh, I just ruin everybody's strategy, including mine, just because I can't get the cards where I want them to, to be. Even then, this is a, a dexterity game that I enjoy, because there are the dexterity games in which if you miss, you miss and you don't do anything. Here, usually, you get a list to ruin somebody else's plan. You may still get by chance to further your own actions. You're still doing something, it is still fun, even if you're not great at the straighty stuff. The game is so fast that it doesn't really matter if you run out of cards early. The pace of the game is very fast. So, in conclusion, Maximum Throwdown is a little pleasant game. Not the main course in your uh, game nights, uh, but for a light filler, for a game to warm people up, this could be a good choice. Definitely a choice that I would not mind playing in the future.